Hey, what's up, man? We are back. We are back down here in Tribeca doing our thing, man. And uh, we got the the great chief, Louis Anamone, here with us. And he's been uh, schooling us, educating us (laughs) about how to rise through the ranks of the NYPD. Keep your nose to the grindstone. That's right. Work hard, man. <laughs> Work hard. And whatever you do, don't try to don't go up and comp stat, man. Yeah. You know it's good for you. Stand tall. Yeah, uh, Bill Head had it. Bill Bill uh never had, back down. Never. <laughs> had, he balls. You gotta have some balls in up. There I don't go. know, but I've been told. <laughs> Bill, you brought up an interesting thing on the break. Um and here's something uh, before we go into that. The seven five, right? And now there's a movie, right? Yeah. About doubt. And then uh, everybody knows about the seven five, but there was also another. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, I, I always wanted to. You know, there's some questions that uh, anyone that worked doing the years you worked we would want to know about because we were only really privy to rumors. Right. And the three O precinct, the dirty thirty, and I w- want to tie that into like um, like suicide and and what oh. cops uh, have to put up with these days and. I, he, we all loved Captain Terry Tunnick. Yep. And he was the most honest guy in the world. And I but agree he, with that. Yeah, and he became a victim of that. Well, let's start off from the beginning. Tell us, a li- you know, f- most of our audience is not going to know about the Dirty 30. The well, the 30, 3 old precinct had some real dirty cops there. There's no doubt doing? about that. They were robbing drug dealers. They were stealing money. They were booming doors without warrants, things like that. There was a book, right? Yeah, well... I don't know. Was it Buddy Boys the book? No, No, that was that was seven seven. Oh, that was seven. seven. But Chief, you the upper echelon of the police department wasn't privy to a lot of the investigative uh, steps that the DA's office and maybe even the feds were doing. They were wiring guys, and so everyone in that precinct, even the honest cops, had to look over their shoulder and and. I mean, you can tell the story better than I can. Well, you know, again, I was a chief of patrol. And I wasn't read in on what was going on in the 3 But I, I found out mm-hmm. on the morning when there was a cop threatening suicide in the 3 station house wow. with, with his gun, threatening to kill himself because he didn't know if he was going to jail, if he did something wrong. And as that all spilled out, as a result of that incident, you, you reference Captain Terry Tunnock, a great guy, a guy who was with me at my side in Crown Heights. Drinking the hydrant water yep. with his men, what a what a fantastic cop! What a humble he killed guy, himself. right? Yeah. Let's uh, let's clear this up a little bit, just because I'm even a little yeah. confused right now. Yeah. The the precinct, the thirtieth precinct. Apparently, there was some cops there, and they were get, shaking down drug dealers. Yeah. So they were shaking down. They were booming doors, stealing the drugs, stealing the money, and nobody was getting arrested. So that was the allegation. But the feds and the New York County district attorney's office had a pissing contest each of them had uh sources informants in the 30th precinct each of them wanted to make a case but neither of them wanted to make the case jointly so these cases went on and on and on creating this crazy tension in the precinct because you know if if one more person knows your your secret it's not a secret anymore Mm -hmm. The word was out that there were informants in the precinct. So you had two different investigative bodies? And they had, yes, and they had more than enough to shut those investigations down, make their collars, present to the grand jury, and get their indictments. And what was their motive for not doing that? They wanted more. They wanted more. Bigger fish? Bigger fish, maybe. They wanted more, more, more. But, you know, we used to talk about the feds working on a federal clock. No one ever holds a federal uh, law enforcement agency accountable the way we did at Compstat (laughs) on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. How are you doing? Where are you? They were just, and the Manhattan DA's office was really no better. They had enough to take down those cases. And this incident where the cop was threatening to kill himself finally was the uh, (coughs) straw that broke the camel back. And And then those those cases came down. It made them make the arrest and close the case out. Yeah. But you can imagine the tension oh, in the precinct crazy. and it everyone. But it didn't end there, right? Because you mentioned um, Captain Tunnock. Yeah. Well, you know, he now is 
working. I, I don't know if he was still. I think he was still in Manhattan North. He yeah. was a duty captain. He was executive officer, maybe in the three O. Uh, he responded to a job where one of these people who was arrested, right, uh, was you know at the scene. And you're talking it, about the people arrested, a, a civilian or a cops? No, the cops. Oh, one okay. of the cops who was arrested was at the scene, and Terry, in his mind, said, "Oh my God, I told him." to bring the drugs back to the precinct to vouch it, but I never followed up right. to see if he vouched them. P.S., he didn't. The guy, mm -hmm. cop didn't vouch it and stuff. Okay. So Terry, you know, just generated this guilt within himself that he didn't follow through. Mm -hmm. He didn't. F he ended up taking his own life. Mm -hmm. What a waste. What a sin. Yeah. What a sorry, sorry state of affairs. He was, a, he was a great man. Yeah, and this is, you know, this all could have been, you know, wrapped up a lot sooner. Yeah, you know, these investigations... Uh, that are conducted, um, and then you get a tragedy like that. My my buddy, Mike uh, Amiri, I worked with him. He was my sergeant when I was in Warrants, and he got caught up in the, the de Blasio investigation with uh, with uh, the Jewish guys giving uh, the play for pay for yeah. the gun permits and stuff like right. that. He was a, a commander in, high, uh, in Highway and uh, an inspector, or maybe it was a deputy inspector, yeah. but uh, the feds came to his house. Uh, they came twice. Well, they no, they came the second time. They interviewed him once at the command, then they came. I think they came to his house afterwards, and that was enough to put him over the edge, and he wound up committing suicide too. So, when you have these uh, these off uh, these people that have guns, and you're doing these investigations, uh, it's a good idea to probably take their guns away if you're going to do these in investigations until it's all cleared up. Maybe I don't know because. Or either that or let them know what they're being charged with because this cat and mouse game that the feds play um, and not, not pulling the... You, you got the guy you want. Why are you trying to cast such a, a wide net? Take the guy you want. Yeah. So, the, you know, the idea of taking the gun ahead of time, you know, no investigator is going to want to tip his hand, right? Right, of course. You, you want to you know, work your case, mm -hmm. and we can understand that. But once you start interviewing people, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your, your hand is not secret anymore. Right. Now you've tipped it at that point, mm -hmm. perhaps. But is that going to stop somebody, you know, who's uh, well, how frightened did you enough get, to take his life? How did you get the, the fact feds? That he doesn't have the gun. How did you get the feds in the Manhattan DA's office to, to you know, bring the case down? It, it wasn't me, but it was at that point. It was uh, Maple, Timoney, and uh, Bratton who went to them and and told them both. You know, this is this has to end now. Make your collars, charge them all, because we, we, we can't, you know, mm. continue to work like this. Right. Someone's gonna, going to get hurt. And one of the informants, I think, was the guy that was uh, being threatened at the station house. Wow. So. That's a horrible thing, man. Because, you know, yeah. the, these cops, obviously, if they're dirty, the, whatever happens yeah. to them happens. But if you we get caught up as a that. result... If you get caught up as a result because you work in the same command, most people, the, the, the civilian wouldn't understand. That, you know, you might be standing next to somebody, roll call every day, you know, talking to them, bullshitting. But, you know, once you get into your car and you're with your partner, you know, they do, you know, you guys are, um, you know, separate entities. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you're not privy to what these people are doing. And even if you, it's just a, it's such a, a horrible thing to just keep these investigations going. And for these cops who now have to work in that radio car, not knowing, for right. example, whether the guy to your left is one of the informants. Mm -hmm. Not and that you're going to go out and boom a door you yourself. You said everybody was wired, But right? you're going you're to say something maybe that's going to come back mm -hmm. to haunt you. Maybe you're going to uh, admit to uh, doing uh, seeing a girlfriend on duty. Right, right. Anything that, that might get you jammed Anything. up. So that kind of builds, you know. The white sucks. And yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah, nobody yeah, well, knows. Well, that's another thing, too, because... You know, you find out in the police department that if they're looking at you for whatever, uh, or your, your command, let's say, your unit, they're going to come out with something. Everybody knows that. Even if the initial allegation proves to be false, they're not going to come out with nothing, even if it's white socks. Yeah. Stupid stuff. <laughs> you remember that so one, So that right? patrol guide is, I don't know, what, about six inches thick? Yeah. yeah. Weighs about four, five, six pounds? Yeah. You go through that, you know, every one of us has violated, find that's violated absolutely. sections of that patrol guide yeah. during our career, maybe on multiple times. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah, you know, you're working under the gun. Which brings us to an interesting point because um, you were brought to our attention again because you wrote an article, and that article wound up appearing in the New York Post. And it was a great article, and which led me to read 
well, I, I've read three or four articles that you've written, and I like the way you write. It's it's crisp, it's to the point, and most of all, it's short. They're really not long on the. Yeah. <laughs> you say exactly what you want. You get to the point. It's not long winded. It's an easy read. That's the way I like to read stuff. <laughs> I run out of words very quickly. Uh, but you said, like for example, you mentioned uh, in in. Um, there's one part that I really grabbed me when uh, when De Blasio mentions having a talk with his son, and yeah. the talk what we're talking about right now is because his son's a. Uh, black you know he's half white half black but he's, he's he's black and he's you know he's got an afro whatever the blasio went out of his way to feel like he had to have the talk with him which a lot of black families admit to doing too um there's nothing wrong with that but when you're the mayor um i don't know if you should be saying that to everybody because it winds up disparaging the police officers and the police department in general but uh that was one of the interesting things and you mentioned something about that talk in your article you said uh hmm. Well, no, what was it that you said? Cause I, I, I think I said that he should have that talk with the politicians in the city. Yeah. And with his supporters across the city and anywhere else where, you know, you can find them and tell them this is not the way to move forward. The talk has got to be to support the police, to support the work of the men and women mm -hmm. who are out there on the front lines, round the clock, seven days a week. I don't think that talk helps anybody at all. <laughs> it doesn't. Because you're already telling your child you're starting off at a disadvantage. Some kids might actually work harder thinking that they're starting off at the, at the disadvantage. Most won't. Most won't. Every time something doesn't go their way, they're always going to blame it on that reason. Oh, that's why they say, you know, I can't get ahead. Or And that's, that's depressing. So the premise, right? If you're going to have this talk, you got to look to the premise that underlines it is that you cannot trust the police. Exactly. In particular, you cannot trust white police. Yeah. And that's wrong. Right. That is wrong. That's no way for us to, you know, be ma managing and governing a city or our families. But, you know, sure. this also seems to be a national problem, not just in New York City. We see this in other cities that the police are just getting beat down by these politicians. Yeah. And this I, is the this is the way to to garner votes. Yes, yeah, now I guess you have so. to be woke. Woke, right? yes. Woke, that's the word. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a uh, it's disturbing, really, because it's you know a lot of it has to do with social media. Who knows? Right now, it's the the dog that could bark the loudest. Doesn't mean they got the biggest bite or or the most uh, you know people behind them. It's just these these singular voices. You think they're coming out of large groups, but it's just one person that is shooting away and then maybe there's small groups here and small groups there but uh this this sentiment like you said that's nationwide it, it's not good to me i always had i can always go back to that incident that happened in um i think it was cambridge massachusetts with the harvard professor yeah and i professor always Gates. wonder if that was coordinated yeah. because a lot of these things they sound to me uh, there's all, all, a lot of these situations are coordinated, but that one in particular. Oh, this is a conspiracy yeah, theory. Who, who forgets their keys? <laughs> there was no really, collusion. I really forget your who keys. Who made the call to nine one one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like somehow, listen, you're president of the United States. If that's your buddy, God bless you. You make a phone call on the side. That's, you don't talk about it publicly. Yeah, it's a small incident in a small in a, in a small town in America. Since when does the the president of the United States get involved? Exactly. And this is prior to Trump, who's yeah. answering people's uh, tweets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nationally, them pounding down on the police. and Yeah, it's not good. I have a feeling like that's where the beginning of the, our demise came through, was when the president of the United States doesn't back the police. How convenient is that now, that, now, mm -hmm. that the, the, the police are the scapegoats for every, for every bad situation? Yeah, except that... Uh, Every one of these politicians has a police bodyguard, bodyguard detail, guns. takes them everywhere yeah. they go. Yeah. Well, yeah. is it the same people who are against guns? Against and, guns, yeah. Know. It's hey. just like that recently in the campaign for president, Bernie Sanders said something about, you know, white cops making car stops. White cops. Also did uh, Joe Biden said, oh, if I had a daughter or whatever, I, I would tell her to beware of cops. I mean, I, what are they teaching their kids, you yeah, know? It's crazy. I Absolutely think they crazy. just take these bits, these sound bites that sound uh, that they think is catching on and might gain, garner some votes and, and get sentiment on their side, and they'll say whatever. You could put any piece of paper in front of them, say this, yeah, yeah, that's good, that's what they want to hear, and they'll just do it. They change their opinions on major issues often. <laughs> My parents, 
uh, it's a difference between, you know, like when you hear the politicians and the Blasio, what he told his son, uh, it makes you think back to like what your parents told you about so, the police. Yeah. So my parents told me the policeman is your friend. Yeah. But if he ever comes to the door, and he did on more than one occasion <laughs> in the projects, yeah. you're going to get the shit kicked out of you. And I did, you know, have the shit kicked out of me by my dad. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I learned. The c policeman is my friend, and he's only there, and I'm only getting in trouble because of my actions. And your mother's friend. Because I friend. did something. Yeah. He's your whole family's friend. Yeah. But it's it's gone so far recently. Uh, the other day in Brooklyn, they put a bunch of cardboard boxes on a radio car yeah. so that it couldn't take off. The dowsing in, uh, incident is uh, infamous. Well, the dowsing incident is the one that uh, motivated you to write the letter that... the. What I, what Anger I, and I, shame. Yeah, I, mean. I originally, that's the first um, article that I read of yours, and it was really well done. Thank it was you. really well done because you, exp you, like you said, you kept it short and sweet. You said you were basically disgusted with this. Yeah, and had I waited to write that article, I think I would have written it uh, over the last couple of days with that Halloween incident you're talking about, and then that demonstration down there at the right. Barclay Center where they just went absolutely crazy on the cops with the banners, mm -hmm. with the whole idea, the whole premise of what they were doing was anti-police, anti-law and order. It's, you know, if you didn't know better, fellas, I would say someone's looking to foment a revolution yes. here yeah. Yeah. in the yeah. city. I don't know. And to build to your point, not only in our city, in other cities. Well, you look at in Portland with Antifa. Yeah. And it seems like I can't believe that that mayor just lets them destroy property attack people and he does nothing about it it's it's outrageous you know i well, mean, look at in new york city uh, correct me if i'm wrong you're not allowed to wear a mask in public that's right correct. that's an administrative code violation yeah. that should be in every state of the union because yeah. that's people that wear a mask have bad intentions. bad intentions yeah i don't understand why they don't get rid of the mask all nationwide i mean that should be rule number one no you can't i mean if it's cold obviously and you're going skiing or something that's one thing <laughs> <laughs> but you know oh man my brain is like freaking bugging out right now <laughs> I wanted to say something else, and then uh, all right, uh, back to the uh, the dousing. Yeah, the dousing, like that. You know, you see stuff like that, and it, it, especially the the one image that I have in my head is the guy that coming from behind and throwing it, and the cop getting wet and still going forward. That's the that's right. the that's this confronting. part you're supposed to spin around and come back and grab that guy and collar him. Yeah, so that's the. And, you know, people will tell you, well, they're only kids oh. or it was only water. But the point, those of us who, who are professional or were professional mm -hmm. police, you're putting yourself and your partner at risk, in danger. How do you know this guy isn't going to stab you, mm -hmm. shoot you? He's coming up behind you. There's no tactical recognition um, of the position you're in. And there's no follow-up either. Oh, like, my if God. If that would have happened when we were working, I guarantee you, the next day, there would have been uh, you would have had the firemen coming with uh, with that wrench to lock up every single fire hydrant in hydrant that particular wrench. command, yeah. and the cops would be on the lookout. And guess what? Your party's over. No more playing. Yeah. No more playing in the water. You want to go get wet? You got to go to the pool. You know, and and that that ends that. I you, remember when you were a commanding officer, if someone did anything against your police you would take the whole precinct back. You would lock up every person on that corner and their grandmother, their mother, and their relatives, wherever they were from. I mean, that shuts it down. That gives yeah. them the message. No, you can't do that. You know, I've said this before. For a lot less, we did a lot more back in the day. And I, you know, even before I was a command, I was a sergeant in Harlem. And if a cop lost a radio, a portable radio, I his lifeline, and it happened... It happened, you know, not every back, day, right? but we always got it back because we just shut down the zone, the area, the precinct, whatever it took until somebody called, and they always did. The item you're looking for is in the trash bucket. Mm -hmm. The item you're looking for is in the project, the uh, yeah, trash yeah. room. That's it's what happened here, with us. The, the million-dollar question, why aren't we doing that now? Yeah. It's well, let's let's talk about quality of life because a lot of this broken windows theory, they always re revert back to quality of life crimes. And it seems like all the quality of life crimes that we were focusing on when I was on the job and Bill and you were the chief, um, those seem to be uh, a, a, a big gray area. The uh, open container, the uh, urinating in public, 
the marijuana smoking. There's a big gray area. Jumping the turnstiles now a, a, a civil matter. Go. All that kind of stuff. Those quality of life crimes are the exact crimes that we're looking to turn. Don't do nothing with those. Turn your back on them. And the problem is those residents now that that homeowners, apartment owners, co-op owners, now they come out and they tell you, oh, oh, what are those two people doing there, or, or what are they doing over there? It's like I don't know. They're, they're allowed to be. So, oh, they're smoking. What am I going to do with them? Yeah, I can't. You can't lock them up. Take a walk, guys. F you. All right. We'll see you later. <laughs> so the game has changed. We've lost a valuable tool on the policeman's mm -hmm. gun belt, and it's not his gun, but it's the way we were able to enforce different laws to create that sense of calm and law and order on every neighborhood, on every street in the city. We had tools that we could use. Sometimes it was a criminal law violation. We would take action. Other times it was just something as simple as the uh, smoking, well, you, you sitting, know, the trespassing in buildings. You hit it on the head because they can always turn to crime is down, but, but disorder is up. Disorder is a big thing. Yeah, right? it is. It disorder, is. people peeing on the sidewalk, people sleeping on the sidewalk. So that, that's what makes people nervous. By quality of life crimes, and uh, we're talking about uh, decriminalizing them. Yeah, this is what's happened now in the city. For and the they, betterment and they're of moving who? forward. And they're moving who is the forward. betterment for, though? You know, not honestly, the average citizen. No, not the average citizen. That core group of left-wing, uh, liberal, democratic, I think, voters who are going to be voting in the primaries, who are going to be electing the next mayor. Same way de Blasio got in. Quarter of a million people voted in that primary. Yeah, progressives are, are, is another term for them. You know, they're there. What to do you do think this. it's going to take? I mean, what? what oh, it's going to take another the last Rudy time Giuliani. We uh, talked about. I mean, hope we don't get to the state that we were before Giuliani. Well, the Utah, the Utah uh, boy that was killed in the train station, that seemed to be the turnaround. Ryan right? Wilkins. Well, Watkins. Watkins. Watkins, yeah. Watkins. Well, that seemed to be the turnaround back then. That yeah. was the thing that broke the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back. 2,000 homicides. Yep. He was one of them. Yep. Over 2,000 homicides. And he was killed in the subway. Uh, they came, Square, his I think it was. His yeah. family came to watch the U.S. Open. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. And I think his mother might have been getting harassed or something like that. And she he was, came to her they, they were looking to steal her purse. And he, he came, came to, her, to defense. her defense on that subway station. They stabbed him to death. They took the mother's purse and her money, and they ran upstairs to Roseland and danced the night away. That's right. And the, A block away from the murder scene. And what it was horrible, but I still remember t now um, the the paper the next day it was really th the solemn and the whole city was like that seemed to be a crime and it always seems to be a crime that, uh, a homicide usually that that changes. Okay, now we're fed up. That that was it, man. Let, we got to do something now. Yeah, I I certainly don't wish it on anyone now moving forward in the future to be that victim, mm -hmm. to be that homicide victim that finally changes. You know the uh, mayor's approach and the police department's approach to quality of life and combating uh, let me, uh, uh, just disorder. Let me ask you something. How long will it take? And it saddens me, and I'm sure it saddens you, how hard we work to bring crime to the levels it is right now. How many years will it take of these policies for it to go back to the way it was? That's, that's an excellent question. I don't know, you know, but uh, no, because you, know, in reality, you see signs of it. The people in the street, the street thugs, the, the bad guys out there, they know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They're smart. They're street smart. They see it. And if they detect, and I think they have, that, you know, we don't have that same policy to attack them, to confront mm -hmm. them, you know, it's, it's anybody's guess. But as I said, I, I wouldn't want to be that victim, the last victim that then turns the city around to start to do something. We should be doing something now. Right. We should be doing it now, not waiting for the crisis. Well, we sort of lost stop, question, and frisk. Because yeah. for a cop to stop, question, and frisk someone, now he has to fill out like a, a notebook full of, uh, you know, almost incriminating things. Why did you stop him? What yeah. was his, uh, you know, a million things that puts the cop now on trial. Well, you, the you, you now have a federal monitor, right? Yeah, yeah. And you have an inspector general looking at everything, you know, that they're doing. So you can kiss that uh, tool just about Which goodbye. was a huge tool. Huge. It was, yeah. but, you know, you don't want to overuse it. Right. Well, that's what happened. They started, oh, was, a lot geez. of it was to create the database. Yeah. I Young remember being in a who squad. Five, the streets, you know, five, three touches. You yeah. had to put five, five a month. Yeah. 
That's how many he had to come up with. And I, I okay, listen, I get it, but at, at some point the numbers game with the five a month, yeah. it's like, you know, it's it's just it's it's almost. We, we had an opportunity like in two thousand and eight to negotiate a settlement on this before it. You know, instead, the mayor and the commissioner dug in their heels, and that's Bloomberg and Kelly, and he wanted double the numbers of oh, touches. Uh. And, you know, we ended up with a federal consent decree. De Blasio agreed to it rather than fighting it, and the inspector general and the cops really... What was the, well, the point? They they were gonna get, you, can, you never get crime down to nothing. No, we're f- a no. metropolis for crying out loud. <laughs> There's millions of people that right. live here. You're never going to get down to nothing. I mean, the qual- it was a good quality of life. And the funny thing is, is uh, you know, a lot of cops have, uh, you know, like a negative, oh, wait till you see, you know what's going to happen. And so, and so far, the crime hasn't really risen or the homicide rate hasn't really risen to, or risen that much, or, you know. But what we're constantly saying is, oh, it's going to happen. So are we the negative people here? Well, you know, your, your shootings are up a little bit, like 3 4% citywide right now. And that's usually a harbinger. The fact that homicides are down has a little bit to do with what the cops are doing, right? Mm-hmm. But it has an awful lot to do with what they're doing in the emergency rooms. Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. So that those shooting I victims are low, that's, that's actually really it's brilliant. Well, yeah. That's just one of the things we do. I see that idea. a lot. Yeah. You go to the emergency room, <laughs> a guy's shot eight times. Yeah. Is he going to die? No, he's going to be fine. Yeah, he's going to be fine. So, you know, medical uh, advances have, have improved. Absolutely. But the sense, you know, Bratton's uh, uh, mantra to us, the mission, reduce crime, violent crime, reduce the fear of crime, and improve the quality of life in the neighborhoods. So my question to him was, the fear of crime, how do I reduce the fear of crime? He says, you work on the other two, and it'll take care of itself. And damn if it d- didn't mm-hmm. didn't happen. With a little bit oh, of yeah, yeah. publicity, <laughs> but you show that you can get that violent crime down, that you can make those streets mm-hmm. safer, mm-hmm. you don't have the guy coming up to you looking for money, shaking you down uh, when you're driving at the l- red light. Right. Want to wipe your windows? Oh, but it's man, funny when yeah. you said the fear of crime because, you know, I remember like you used to <coughs> take the train, and if you were white and you were, you didn't get off at Ninety uh, Sixth Street, everybody's like, yo, every, even the black people yeah. waving at you, woo, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> hold the door, conductor, hold the door, we got a white person here, you got to get out, <laughs> and that was the fear of crime, yeah. and now you know, like how you about said, how about the ride in the subway or even walking the streets in the city? Back in the day, they said. The only two people who would look you in the eye on a subway, a psycho, we and used cops. to call them that, yeah, yeah. right? Or a cop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's, you know, <laughs> probably. That was it. You know, EDP is such a Everyone soft term, and now they want to head take down. that away, you know? That's, yeah, they the don't want to call them EDP term. anymore. Yeah. What do they want to call them? That's, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I say make mental it health, uh, uh, recipient. Right. mental health recipient. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> mental is health recipient. Is that the most <laughs> it ridiculous like an award. thing? Yeah. It I'm, sounds like you won an award. I'm staying oh with my <laughs> gosh, I got the award for mental health recipient of the week. I'm staying with EDP. I don't care what they say. You don't like psycho. <laughs> that was a better one, but <laughs> yeah, that was totally that's correct. Long gone. Correct. They're always that's changing long words. Yeah. That was changing <laughs> and words. And it was emotionally distressed. That was yeah. a little softer, too, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Crazy. Keep it rolling. Keep what it are we going to do? Keep man. it rolling. What are we going to do? Well, how much more time does uh, our, mayor, our current mayor have, de Blasio? Two yeah. years plus. Oh, to another two years plus? Two, yeah, how much damage can you do in two oh years? Oh, my God. A lot. Man. A lot. Huh? A lot. Right? Yeah, man. Jeez. Chief, if I had to ask you, if there's one job in your whole career that left the biggest uh, effect on you, what would you say? One incident you're talking about. Yeah, one about. incident. Yeah. One incident. So, uh, oh, gosh. It would be the Kevin Gillespie homicide. In the 4-6. Yep. Yeah. Kevin Gillespie homicide. Could you tell we, us about that? Yeah, we've had, you know, and I had my share of cop homicides during the 90s and, and earlier. So Kevin was a cop in uh, the street crime unit. Uh, He's working, he's newly assigned to the street crime unit in 1996 after the merger with the housing and transit police. He had been a housing cop working anti-crime in the Ville, PSA 2, Brownsville. Now he's in street crime. He was selected, he was a great cop, former Marine. He's in street crime, he's out, on the concourse up in the 4-6 precinct, the Grand Concourse, and him and his two partners stop a car 
that look suspicious, uh, and they're waiting, you know, they run the plate, they're waiting, you know, the plate didn't come back to the car. They get out of their car to approach the driver and the people that were in this car. The doors of the suspect vehicle open, and shots are fired from inside as these guys come out of the car at the cops. Kevin is hit underneath his armpit, bypassing his vest right through his heart and his uh, arteries. He falls down. There's a gun battle there. There's another transit cop shot at a uh, subway station just a couple of blocks away. We apprehend one or two of them that night and one or two within a day or two. Okay. So... I'm, I'm home. I respond to the hospital, St. Barnabas what, Hospital. What rank were you at this time? I was the chief of uh, department. Okay. I respond to St. Barnabas Hospital. Kevin is there on the table, cut out, you know, he's dead. And the room, the emergency room, is filled with street crime cops and some uniforms. But, I mean, at the time, we may have had, you know, 100 of them working. There had to be 50 or 60 of those 100 at the crying. Really somber, right? Yeah. So now I had to do one of the toughest things in my career and tell them, you know, in my Comstat voice, wipe your fucking tears, put your gun belts on, get the fuck out the street and find who killed this kid. Mm. You got informants, you got, you know where to stop the guys. Shake that tree. Yeah, you better believe it. I said, I I want this guy caught or guys caught. Mm. And, you uh, you know, they were shocked. They got up, and I give them credit to this day. Out they went, and they helped, you know, capture these guys. Now, fast forward a week. It's after, the, after Kevin's wake, after his funeral. I'm sitting in the office in one PP, and the secretary comes in. There's somebody here to see you, one of his partners from housing, longtime partner. Okay, send him in. Kevin's partner, you know, partner, former partner. He says, listen, uh, he says, uh, we found this in Kevin's locker. Uh, His wife said we're supposed to bring it to you. It was a letter he wrote by hand to Chief Animal. He spelled my name wrong. (laughs) (laughs) And he's basically saying, listen, I'm I'm proud to be an NYPD cop. I I love this idea of street crime. I'm a little concerned about getting shot by a uniformed cop. Think about that in in relation to what's been happening lately with the guys getting shot, too, by friendly fire. He says, so I thought about it, and I think I can help you out. I have a plan to uh, prevent uh, on-duty cops, you know, from shooting us that are dressing down in the street, et cetera. And he had two or three pages, you know, outlined. So now, now back up to when he was shot and killed. He got out of that car. His gun was in his holster. And these three guys or four guys that they stopped in that car were wanted for a string of violent robberies throughout the Bronx. They were all armed. And he was concerned he was going to get shot by a cop. Mm -hmm. He ends up getting shot and killed by some dirtbag robber, you know, up in the Bronx. So we sent that letter over to uh, Bratton. He endorsed it right away. And the police academy did a uh, uh, in-service training thing dedicated to him based on his ideas to uh, protect cops in the street. Wow. What a... So that was... A footnote to that, um, the shooter killed himself. One of them did. One of them them hung himself in jail, yeah. The others, I think, are still serving time. Yeah. Uh, I could see how emotional you got telling that story. Yeah, me too. I was getting emotional too, too, man. And that morning, after his homicide, we had a comp stat meeting. And somebody wanted to know, you're canceling it? I said, no way. We're going to have our comps that meeting after being up, you know, all night. And somebody at that meeting said something stupid. You know, hey, what do you want us to do? You know, uh, chief, it's, uh, you know, it's a public service homicide. You know, some shit like that. And, you know, then I lost it Mm -hmm. at that meeting. And uh, we had words back and forth. The guy picked up a chair. Oh, God. You know, so that's all ancient history. Yeah. What do you what, what do you see the policing going in the future? Because since you're a visionary, I'm, I'm curious to see what <laughs> what you think about is, is coming up. As for like, um, well, I'm, I I suspect that the uh, body worn cameras are only going to be the beginning. You know, the 
They'll have cameras on us off duty, <laughs> uh, on duty cameras. Uh, there'll be uh, um, conversation monitoring. They'll be monitoring everything you you say or do on the internet. Yeah. Or, you know, it's crazy. All of a sudden, we're the enemy. You said this earlier. All of a sudden, the cops are the enemy. There's that premise that we're the bad guys. We're not doing our our, our job, right? right? Everyone's got to be afraid of us, not cooperate with us. Well, that's something that's happening now because if you're a law, enfor uh, law enforcement officer and you do a lot of social media posting, you can be sure that there's watch groups keeping an eye on your social media postings. Oh, I'm sure there and are. That, right. God forbid you get involved in an incident. If you lean one way or the other, they're going to make it known. That That's going to become public knowledge immediately. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I see some cops that I know and they're posting stuff on social media, and uh, I don't know. Put pictures of your dog, what you had for dinner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it might exactly. be boring, but boring is better right now if you really got to be on social media. Because, they, you know, they're zeroing in, and the target, you know, is is the uh, NYPD and policing across the country. Yeah, I saw this the thing disgrace. where you can shoot at somebody, <laughs> and it's a net. It's almost like the net that he it was in Planet of the Apes, but what comes out... Remember when they got Charlton Heston with the net? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But this net, it goes around your knees or goes around yeah. your arms. I, I'm not sure why it hasn't come out yet because it makes pe perfect sense. Is there any... I think it's probably because they don't want to go around uh, suspect's head, but is there anything that you can see that's coming up or that you've heard of um, that you can you can say to yourself, you know what, I, I, I think th this would be a good idea or uh, a weapon or something like that and... Yeah, you got me, Mark. Laser, laser guns? <laughs> yeah. No, laser, laser guns? Listen, no, it Pays. seems to me that no matter what they give us, there's that political uh, message right now. They don't want anyone in jail. Mm -hmm. right. They don't want to make your job easier to capture someone, to put them in jail, because that's not the game plan. Game plan is to blame the buildings mm -hmm. on Rikers Island for right. the problems. And, and by closing them and putting different buildings in the neighborhood. Well, that, I wanted to talk to you about that. You know, but before we go, that solves before something? Before we get to that, yeah. what, do you think, knowing what you know now, do you yeah. think you could be able to work for de Blasio? Oh, the come mayor? on, never. No, really? Never, no, because he, he couldn't, number one, he wouldn't hire me. Number two, you know, I couldn't, I'd have to speak truth to him. Uh -huh. I, I might be the first right, person right. to speak truth to him. He doesn't want to hear that. He has an agenda. And the you first think you lady, get launched? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> come on. Day one, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for your service. Thanks back. for your service, <laughs> Chief. Goodbye. <laughs> What's so, it like when you sit in on these meetings and it's, it's you know, you're, you're a, um, a public, well, you're all public servants, but you're, you're confined by the restraints of the job itself. You might be a big shot in, um, in, in on the job, but now you're sitting there with the mayor. You're sitting uh, with somebody who's actually a big, maybe a big time businessman in the city. Well, like how much input do you have? Do you have? Do they ask you for opinion? Do they just tell you what they want from you, and that's it? Get out. Well, you know, uh, Rudy mm -hmm. uh, had a kind of a uh, an open mind mm -hmm. for ideas. He was concerned about a de upcoming demonstration, for example. So he would listen. Yeah, and he, they'd say, Louis, what are you going to do about it? You know, I don't want the streets shut down. I don't want people, you know, not being able to get home, right. get over the bridge. Okay, Mr. Mayor, that's all you have to tell me. Give me the mission and leave it to us because we have great people working for us, right? And we're going to solve it for you. So, on, on so that's a kind of... What, what do you, you mentioned uh, de Blasio's agenda. What yeah. is his agenda? Well, it's progressive. It's woke. It's left of left, you know, liberal. Mm -hmm. And it's... Uh, you know, he's trying to get a name for himself. I guess he's looking to be national a national office, figure, guess, yeah. but he's a joke. He's a joke, and he's a dangerous joke yeah. for the people of the city. Well, he dropped and out of the, the presidential cops. race. He did, yeah. I think he was the first one to drop out. He, may he have had been. less than half of 1%. <laughs> he, had, yeah. he had less than yeah. half. <laughs> so think about the ego that you have to have to put yourself in, uh -huh. you know, to think that you should be president of the United States when you can't run this city. The city of New York. You and know what bothered you me? You can't too, guarantee safety. There's a for uh, speaker of the New York City Council. His name's Corey Johnson. Right. He went to John Jay and apologized for the past 25, 30 years of policing of how it affected the well, neighborhoods. 
that were, were our victims, were the police department's yeah. victims, not the thousands of people whose lives were saved. Were saved. And Nobody ever counts on that. Nobody yeah. ever adds that into their wow, equation. That's so, a, isn't, that, isn't that pathetic? Uh, yeah. I'd, I'd like to put him on the show and just beat him yeah. up for two hours. Uh, yeah. You know? yeah, why not? I yeah. mean, if you were closer, to, if you were, if you had a little bit above, to, I think twenty two hundred was our peak. But if you had two thousand homicides a year on average, and then you go to about three fifty four hundred, that's that's more than fifteen hundred lives saved a year, a year that are not killed. Okay, so you add those, compound those ten years, you're looking at about I don't know, I'm a, I'm horrible at math. That's six hundred thousand. <laughs> it's like six hundred thousand lives, right? That's a lot of lives. Yeah. it's a lot of lives <laughs> right. in in our world. And how about victims? Yeah, of course. Victims of robberies, oh, yeah. Yeah, of yeah. assaults, robberies. and you know, you know, look at the domestic violence thing. Of y you came on in '64 yes. was yeah. Back then, you threw the husband out, said, "Go have a few drinks down the corner, yeah. come back later Walk when you cooled off, right?" Now, and, don't, and don't have us come back. Right. Yeah, which brings up an interesting question: How does the how do the victims nationwide get any satisfaction? I mean, I know one side is pushing these stories into social media every single day. It always starts off with a. Uh, DUI kills um, another driver, illegal immigrant DUI. So they're yeah. always pushing the illegal immigrant. But that being said, there are victims of crimes that, uh, or there will be a lot more, of people who should have still been in prison. So that life, if the person that was responsible for their crimes and they should have still been in prison, that person's life might have been saved. Exactly. So now you have the uh, <laughs> the mayor and the governor, Governor Cuomo, Mayor de Blasio, uh, releasing people from the prisons and the jails before the new law takes effect January 1. Right. They don't want it to be like a mad rush out the door, so they're going to let them loose earlier. And you've had instances in the last month or so where people who should have been in have committed very serious violent crimes. So, you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist on this stuff. This is bad, bad for the safety of the general public, and it's terrible bad for cops who, you know, have to work these streets. They don't have the tools to address it, no. you know? Hey, Pam, what was that, license for illegals? Yeah. Well, ah. Oh, yeah, what kind driver's of license? license. Driver's, driver's license? license? Yeah, that's well, the license is yeah. No, I, listen. But, uh, so driver's license for illegals... But why do they, they don't even they don't, they don't need driver's licenses. They never did. Oh, they don't yeah. need insurance either? Yeah. <laughs> they never had insurance or driver's licenses. <laughs> you, 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 Mark, you, a mystery you mobile. You mentioned the victims. And again, I'm going to tell you, they're giving uh, uh, Mets tickets to uh, criminals right, right. to show up for your court it's dates. Unbelievable. And so there's no concern for the victims because there's less victims than there are bad guys out in the streets, apparently. Yeah, but nobody cares about the victims until it's somebody in your family. Yeah. Then it becomes a big problem. Yeah, so or unless you're you're a cop, you know, and you, yeah. you're seeing it day in, day night, day out. Is Breaking news: O'Neill is expected to resign. Is that what we hear? Wow, look at that! Wow. Man, we are we whoa. Not I think only, he was watching this on a. Not sound only are we on our out. first episode. We're on our first episode of Get Police Off the out. Cuff in our new digs, but we're also upping the show by giving you on the spot <laughs> Whoa. breaking news, man. That's how we do nowadays, man. Louis Anamone appointed police commissioner. Oh, no, I, I doubt that very much. There's a vacancy. There may be a vacancy. Wow. In his summer home in Singer Island, he was yeah. called. <laughs> she. Wow, talk about t timing. Yeah. The fact that that came through right now. Yeah, I used to work in 300 Gold Street. Doesn't help Pantaleo, though. No. No, no, no. No. I used to work in 300 Gold Street. Um, that's where we used to have the training unit yeah. for the Pulaski. Yeah. And, Boss from uh, the 8-4. You know, Commissioner O'Neill, he, uh, he, he was in that building, too. And I used to see him all the time in the gym, on the elevator and stuff. And he was a gentleman. Um, all right, we're going to check something oh, out right now. Top, We're top. seeing that uh, Commissioner O'Neill is resigning. Yeah. I, who knows? Uh, it's got to be someone very soft he's going to promote, promote now to wow. PC because... Uh, I wonder if uh, his blast at Governor Cuomo, maybe Andrew what was, was a little oh. annoyed. What was yeah. the blast? You know, that the... Uh, MTA cops on the subway. Yeah. yeah. What happened? He put 500 MTA cops gonna on the subway. Going to hire 500 new MTA cops and put them... Uh, in the subway to stop... Uh, Basically to guard the turnstiles, yeah, right? Because yeah. Guard uh, the oh, money. No one's paying them. No, oh, because they're going to start enforcing the law oh, again. Oh, who yeah. knows? 
That was, I mean, if you put somebody thing. at the turnstile, it's it's because you want people to start paying again. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I thought they had that covered, though, because to me, the congestion pricing that they're about to uh, destroy New York City with yeah. was a result because they wanted to let everybody on the trains for free. I in think the subways. That, that's true. You know, the, let's have the yeah, uh, taxpayers the mo- from the suburbs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, who exactly. owns cars? Who owns cars? The yeah. better, you know, people who have a little bit more money. Yeah. yeah. So you tax the rich. Well, they're not rich just because you own a car, but they're it's, uh, it's people class. that live in the boroughs. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it determined f- so, but uh, that's interesting. So you think that that had something to do with? Um, I, I don't know. Two buck and he- bu- I don't know. I mean, I, I know De Blasio and Cuomo are not supposed to like be getting show. along. Yeah. So I can't see maybe. The well, they mayor. never got along. Yeah. So maybe there was a carrot in this for the mayor. You know, if you let him resign, I'll do X, Y, or Z for you as the governor. Who knows? Wow, it's crazy. Yeah. Chief, can I ask you another real yeah. quick question? In your police career, which, you know, 34 years in NYPD, you did some time in the MTA, what is your biggest regret in your police career, if you can... Besides uh, doing this show today. (laughs) 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 Biggest regret, uh, yeah, was probably taking that uh, position at the MTA. Taking that job? Yeah, yeah, that was a uh, big, big mistake. That was right after you retired from... It was uh, a couple of years. It was after, right after 9-11. You want to roll there, though. You were yeah. retired from here, yeah. chief of department. You're doing all this consulting work. Right. It's, it's, to me, the consulting work sounds it's just like a, a bunch of fun. Yeah. We're going to talk but a little you, bit. You're talking with cops. You're meeting cops throughout the country, you know, and... A lot of them knew nice, some, me. I, I would imagine some nice me. dinners were had. <laughs> oh, uh, maybe, maybe a some glass cigars, of red some wine, wine. A little s- a couple of uh, stogies. Maybe two glasses of red wine. Some stogies. Some yes. yes. with, the th- with three coffee yes. beans in yes. it. Yes, yes. always <laughs> with the three beans. Come on. <laughs> and then I worked as a bartender. <laughs> I know that. And, it, and then they pulled you out of there, and you, you took this job with the MTA. But I went to the state office of public security first. What was that? Right after that. A newly created office, Jim Kalstrom, formerly the from FBI, the FBI, yeah, yeah. was the director. I was the executive, the, the uh, number two, deputy director, for a couple of months, made a presentation to the MTA about security in the wake of 9-11, and they made me an offer. But they're, they're not serious. They weren't serious then. They're not serious now about security. They're not serious about uh, cleaning up the place. Right. You think they want a really good cop? Uh, looking at what's going on over there? <laughs> no, they really don't. They don't want a I really don't think good cop. No. I would imagine they're not stealing too cleverly over there. Yeah, no. You know? Yeah, you, oh, you, gotta, you don't you have right. to do much snooping around to find There's probably wads of money right in <laughs> garbage bags full of money <laughs> in people's offices. Yeah. So, so about during 9 11, you weren't on the police department. No. So you must no. have been at home like. <laughs> yeah. But you well, lasted that, two that's years when with I the went MTA. That's when I went. No, less than that. I, I went to uh, Baltimore. Eddie oh, okay. Norris was a commissioner. He said, a get, come down here, help out, you know. What are we going to do with the security? Did you like bring, it down there? Bring yeah, your Uzi. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> come, come down here, help so out. He had the police headquarters. The, the street was blockaded, and guys were out there with, the, you know, the MP4s and everybody looking really good. So I, I asked him when I got to the, I said, is it safe for me to be here? <laughs> Where is that, Baltimore? <laughs> Baltimore, yeah. Did you we go had out had on patrol just to see yeah, what it was like? Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, he gave did me a remind you of the old three two. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. the old, the old, old three two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a tough, tough little town, like Wild West. Yeah, but you know, they uh, back then they they were policing it. Yeah, yeah. They, they would. They didn't have many, but they wow. were, what they had. They were what, doing. what do you think's going on there now? What do you think's going on in like Chicago too? Like, what what's the discrepancy between? There's parts of Chicago where all the homicides occur, and then there's the other part of Chicago where yeah. life is uh, fancy free and nothing. Yeah. So the so the yuppies or the millennials <laughs> or wh- whatever they call them today, yeah. you know, aren't seeing it, aren't experiencing it. Right. They're working and living mm-hmm. and you know eating and drinking. So it doesn't affect until it affects them. Until it affects them. Is that yeah. what's happening here in the city? That it's not. We're going to need another Watkins, another murder like that. For let's, let's hope not. But uh, the the handwriting's on the wall. There's no desire right now in the political establishment for a strong, active police department uh, preserving law and order. And the order part is is what they really right. choke on. And then you have the situation with the homeless. Um, That's part of that quality of life. Li- uh, yeah, well, That's that was. Quality I didn't life. mention it, but, you know, we see it uh, in Los Angeles. 
uh, San Francisco, I mean, uh, Los Angeles, San Francisco, a lot of homeless, um, Sacramento, and then um, New York City. Now you're starting to see it like a lot here. Yeah. A lot more than you used to. We had we went through a time where you, um, <laughs> you know. The, the, the solution is to ban straws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 16 ounces. Hey, that's right, right. The coax them yeah. in yeah. and you do yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, that was yeah. Bloomberg's thing, yeah. Right, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. So, you know, going way back before both of your times, uh, there was a mayor here in the city, Ed Koch. Yes. I remember Ed Koch. Yeah, right. So, Mayor Koch was, How am I un- doing? was <laughs> under the gun. Yeah, that was him. He doing? was under the gun about providing uh, shelters, uh, more shelters, newer shelters, lots of shelters for the homeless. I mean, that's how far back this issue goes. Right. Of course, the numbers back then were nowhere near what they are today. And his answer on camera during an interview was, you know, they said, you know, why, why are you against this? Why won't you, you know, sign the uh, council's uh, law? Why won't you let us build more of these? His answer was, if you build them, they, they will come. come. <laughs> That's that was yes. before that movie. Yeah, he was so <laughs> so on target. Yeah, Absolutely. talk about it, right? You know, it, and that's what you're seeing in the West Coast now. Yeah, they their hands off them. They're taking over downtown LA. You can see the police uh, uh, headquarters from where their homeless encampments. You know, are. and cops want to do their job, and yeah. when you take the tools away from them, it, they feel like you know, it just it affects. You think it has to do with the. Uh, uh, and it creates seems that like stress. there's more addicts now. I mean, before there was heroin, and heroin, uh, you know, those are the, you know, the eyesores that you th- see throughout the city, the obvious ones. And now you have so many more prescription drugs out there, and people getting yeah. hooked on opioids, and that's what they rather spend their money on getting more pills than they do on finding a, putting a roof over their head. And it's hot in L.A. You know, you don't really have to be yeah. indoors that much. So why, why don't we have body cameras on these doctors that are writing the prescriptions? <laughs> that's yeah, opioids. that's brilliant. Why aren't we, uh, you know, body cams on the pharmacists who are dispensing them to the same guy day in, day out? Why aren't, why aren't the judges and the lawyers wearing body cams? Yeah. This is such a yeah. great idea. You know, everybody's I mean, getting kicked Because the premise is you can't trust the cops. Everyone else is fine. That's right. It seems and like that's so wrong. Doesn't it seem like everybody's getting kickbacks? Like, eh, yeah. This money can, it trickles down. That's why, you know, we're having such a, we talked about earlier about uh, the possibility of a civil war. We'll, we'll be basically doing the bidding for these politicians. And they're the, the only reason why we're fighting is because we're trying to get them, you know, Democrats want to get back in power because all those deals that they created for those eight years when Obama was president, they're fading away because they realize, oh, this guy can't really do nothing for me anymore. You know, he's out of power. <laughs> I got to find a Republican. And before all those deals end up in a squash that's why they really want to get they want to impeach the guy now in the middle of his uh you know almost towards before the uh uh, an opportunity to get reelected, because all those deals man and my point is this man you know i i was a cop for 20 years here in this city and you know everybody thinks you you know you're you're up to no good i'll be uh, god's honest i was never offered a bribe i was never offered drugs or sex to look the other way. Now, I know, that's bad luck. My point is... <laughs> <laughs> I just had bad luck, man. Tell us about Epstein, man. Did you ever have come across with him? Just you were sitting with all the big shots? No, it was just on a corruption level. Yeah. He seemed to have been involved yeah. with a At lot of... At the very of, highest levels, yes. right? Did yeah. you guys ever do an investigation on Epstein? No, you were, geez, uh, no. You know, the... the, the that Well, Epstein, the, the guy was... Uh, he hung himself allegedly, but now they're claiming yeah. it was a homicide. But that's just somebody, there was, yeah, somebody yeah, saying that. There was a lot of open it. cases. I'm sure there's somebody that we were investigating. Guys, too. I know the feds were the investigating with him. Some big politicians had, yeah. had taken plane rides with him, and um, you know, trafficking of younger, younger underage girls, yeah. girls yeah. for sex, providing them. He was like a pimp himself. Well, you know, I had heard from uh, we had Irma Rivera on this uh, great detective from yeah. uh, Special Victims years ago. She says. She comes across a lot of human trafficking in her private investigation work. I'll bet. That the Latin Kings and the Bloods, that's their business yeah. now. They're yeah. involved in They're human trafficking. They're snatching these people, off to the girls off the street. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And so they get out of the drug business and they yeah. get into the human trafficking business. And More money, probably easier for them. Less risk. And there's less risk. You know, there's less nobody, time, too. Nobody yeah. really. If the person's still alive, yeah. you know, it's not like getting caught at the time. You get caught with a couple of kilos or. Or a lot of drugs, you're going to do a lot of time. Yo, we take your federal, right? Yeah, if you got yeah. the right uh, the right case, bring it bring it 
federal. So, Chief, where do we go in law enforcement from here? What What is your assessment of where we're at, yeah, and well, where do we go from here? So, we need, you know, uh, I said before, the uh, Giuliani was the right mayor for New York City for that time. So, he's we a tough guy. We need another law enforcement, law and order mayor for New York City. Why? Because uh, in Italian, they used to say, the head stinks, or the fish stinks from the head. Right. Mm -hmm. you, and right now, we've got that stinky smell up at the head <laughs> yeah. in the mayor's office. We need new blood there that takes a strong stand, supporting police. Uh, law and order is important. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by doing that, you just, everybody else by osmosis understands, well, this is now the mission. This is what we have to do. And... The NYPD can get it done. I you wish that could happen. All they need yeah. is that leadership. That yeah. freaking leadership. Do you still have the hat with the fried eggs on top? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should that's throw that in the ring. Throw in the mayor's <laughs> ring. Throw it right my, in there, man. Get involved. <laughs> that's my funeral outfit. It's all there. <laughs> no, don't, say don't say that. Today, uh, don't does say your wife yeah. call you chief at home? Or? Uh, absolutely. No, <laughs> Let me ask no, you. No, what, what, I had four. She has five stars. Yeah. What does your day consist of like now? What do you do? We get up in the morning, wife and I. I have a little breakfast, a little coffee, check the uh, the post, read the New York Post religiously. <laughs> and then we're out for either a jog, walk, or walk, jog, or just a walk. You know, do three How miles. How many years you've so. been married? And then it's all, uh, after that, it's all grandkids, sports, and this oh, and wow. that. Sounds like a nice day. 51 years. Wow. 51 years. 51, 51 years, years to the same woman. That's great. Oh. That's yeah. great. God that's bless great. you. Yeah. God bless you guys. We're still in our same uh, starter house, too. Wow. <laughs> you didn't add uh, 50 years there. You didn't add any extensions yeah, on Yeah, we, yeah, we oh. did. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to make it sound like it's a blink and he still lives yeah. in his room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how, how many you know, kids do you have? They're like grown, obviously. Yeah. How many? Three kids, a boy and two girls. No one followed you in law enforcement. Nobody followed me in law enforcement and 11 grandkids. Wow. Oh, that's great. So the youngest of nice 10 years old. He was practicing the wedge with them in the yeah, yard yesterday. Yeah, listen. When do you find time to do all this consulting thing? Yeah, well, you know, in between. In between, we do a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, and I teach over at uh, John, John Jay. Jay on Tuesday oh, yeah? nights. What do you teach? NYPD captains and above uh, working on their masters. So there are 20 of them in the class. I'm teaching leadership and critical issues in policing. That's great. You think we got a couple of critical issues I think that yeah. we can talk about every week for two hours? Code red. We're in code red right now. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's interesting. You talked about being a leader. Um, to, were you always a leader when you were growing up as a kid? Uh, no. Were I don't, you always the guy, you know, putting the games together? I wasn't, and, I wasn't the gang guy. That was no, not I'm not me. talking about a gang, <laughs> yeah. but I'm just saying that there's, there's kids that take yeah. charge in certain situations. No. Like... Um, I'm just wondering, I where, learned it. I where learned did this it. come, when did this yeah. start to... So, you know, when I, uh, when I passed that sergeant's test, I said, holy shit, I'm going to be, you know, mm -hmm. in charge of a squad yeah. someplace, somewhere. It ended up being the 3-2 right. as a sergeant in 1973. So uh, I, I better start, you know, looking to see that I act appropriately. It's a special know quality. My job it's a special quality teach. to lead men, man. I, I, you know I me, mean? yeah. I'll be honest. And women. You. I like, listen, I'm a, I'm a follower, bro. I'm not even a good follower. I'm the guy in the back of the, of the class <laughs> looking around. Everybody, you, you, you always, hey, Mayo, get in line. <laughs> but, man, yeah, you talk about not only were you a leader, but you were a great leader, man. Like, you know, uh, well, uh, inspired you. the men. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, people were motivated to work to work for you, under you. And when you came out and you spoke to us when I was in the task force, I remember you guys coming out and speaking to us and, you know, stroking us, telling us the importance of our <laughs> job, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it was true, though. No, it was it true. It was true. But, you know, listen, a lot of times when, you, when you're just a cop or you're just a detective and the, the, there's a big boss coming to uh, whatever, yeah. you whatever, know, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but when you came, everybody was nudging each other. Yeah, the, listen, this is the man right here. Yeah. So, listen, I had that, you know, background of living through the blackouts of 77, uh, which were bad, you know, for the city, and then the riots in 91 and 92. And when I told people that, you know, the cops, mm -hmm. in particular pl people like the task forces throughout the city, saved this city until we got to Giuliani, mm -hmm. and then we, we got everybody on board. People you know what, Mayor, uh, Mayor, Mayor Dinkins probably wasn't the best friend to the cops, and a lot of things were happening. The one thing, though, you got to say, like every, every mayor, with the exception of de Blasio, I still haven't seen it yet, but 
They usually, they're visionaries. They have something because that freaking tennis thing that he did was mocked in the beginning. Yeah. And now it turns out that that is a, it's brought in over a billion dollars to the yeah. city. Every yeah. year, those two weeks, they get more people there to, than, than the Super Bowl, the NBA, the World Series combined. And he fought for that, and he actually got it through. So that was the, his sport. Yeah, yeah. Was but his, you know what? Yeah. It, in the hindsight, the Yankees were for Rudy. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Absolutely. it makes and you know it's a val people come from all over yeah. the world to go to those two weeks of the U.S. Open, and no matter what anybody says about him, at least he was on point with that one thing. Yeah, that one thing. That one thing. Yeah. <laughs> that one thing doesn't make up for the Korean boycott on Flappish Avenue. Yeah, that was bad. Oh my God! Yeah, but and you that know set what? the stage for Crown Heights. Yeah, but it also set the stage for Do the Right Thing, which was a great movie. Yeah, <laughs> and, a Spike uh, Lee movie. Spike Lee movie. I worked on that one. Yeah. And, you know, that I'm sure he got inspired by that Korean. It was yeah. actually in the movie too. You know. Yeah. Um, but man, we had real such life a, art imitating life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we, we were talking about a few other things as far as training. I know you were big with training. Yeah. And I always remember too, you started. Anti-crime training. Yeah. And that's the amazing thing. Anti-crime is so important. You worked it yourself. But th there's no training. Yeah. They just throw you in and they yeah. say, all right, now you're working in plain clothes. Yeah. You have to realize what it's like to be in plain clothes. Yeah, exactly. Right? We talked a little bit about looking people in the eye. So when you're in uniform, you look people in the eye. When you're in plain clothes, you don't. Right, exactly. Right? You're using surprise. Yeah, that's a tough thing. Yeah, right. the subtle but in uniform, when you're in civvies, you look everyone in the eye. If you're a cop and you're in civvies, whether you're on duty or off duty, it's just something. When you walk into a room, you look everybody in the eye. Yep, right. And if you see somebody's eyes that catch you and they don't look away and you don't look away, that guy's a bad guy and there he you knows go. you're a cop. Yeah, yep. Absolutely. You know? You it's uh, something you can't break. It's hard to break. Yeah, it's some, you know, he, he came in and uh, first of all, he was dressed in his uh, patent uniform, yeah. you know? And he stood up Sam in front of this Brown. big auditorium, and he was saying that, you know, we just started to take a little bit a piece of crime. We've given a few body punches, but we're not done. And he goes, the next big drop in crime is going to be because of anti-crime. And yeah, we left it like, yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it. Let's go. <laughs> you know? But and training, yeah. you knew, I hope you knew, and the rest of the guys and gals there knew, I was behind them. Absolutely. And Bratton was behind me. Yes. And Rudy was behind Bratton. Absolutely. With, uh, with the type of motivation that, that you, you gave to law enforcement, you probably would have been one hell of a coach. <laughs> like yeah. in sports. Hey, yeah. Yeah, yeah man. Right? I could see and that. I understand the uh, Giants and Jets are not oh, doing they, that oh, well. They, the they, may be in the, they may be in the market. <laughs> That's right. Me so listen, you, you know take, somebody. Let's take over the Jets, yeah, man. Let's go the coordinator. Oh, forget it. You <laughs> motivate them. I'll do the X's and O's. <laughs> Pam, what go. did you put up there? But uh, was it? I said it sounded like he was acting like he was anti-crime. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. What you said you have to act surprised. All cops yeah. need to be have acting lessons, sort yeah. of, right? Yeah. yeah. Always do it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a little bit that every tool that you have, like you mentioned earlier about the toolbox. Yeah. Uh, all that stuff, it, it's useful. The verbal judo, um, knowing how to talk to people in the street. But at the end of the day, if you got to put cuffs on somebody, yeah. you got to be a little tough. You know. Uh, We're in that business, right? That's what the business it's is. It's a hands-on business. That's right. You hope that it maybe, you know, you can get through a whole month without putting hands on someone, but you never know. Yeah. Because the other guys don't read the same training materials. They forget their role. They're supposed to say, okay, officer, yeah, yeah where do you want me? So what do you do tomorrow? The phone rings. Louie. Yeah. What are you doing? Are you busy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, listen, uh, I don't know if you heard, but... <laughs> We may need a police commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> to tell your wife, listen, I can't go jogging with you in the morning anymore. Oh, that, we're gonna have to work on that. Uh, yeah. All so, right, so we're at a part. We're, we're at a point right now where uh, we're we're up. Believe it or not, these two hours have flew by. And um, before we go, uh, maybe there's something that you can give because we have a lot of uh, New York City cops and law enforcement all over the country. What advice could you give to a young cop that's coming on the job now? All right, so stand tall, head high, never back down, number one. And number two, in light of this melee over at Metrotech, I'll take a page from Rocky Marciano, hands high, chin down, and keep fucking punching. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, keep, 
That was Keep you know, something more. Right? Right? <laughs> right? Boom. We had Boom. Jo- Although we had Joe Murray on the show. He had yep. a one punch yeah. knockout. <laughs> we got uh, uh, one thing I know. He's running for uh, Queens, uh, Queens, Queens DA. DA Queens right? DA. As a matter of fact, the election's tomorrow. Yeah. November 5th. Well, That's we're, right. We're rooting for him. You yeah. know, it was, since we're giving a shout out to all the. Uh, the young cops, and this is a legend that we have here. You know, they're starting to recruit from all over the country now. I don't know if, if they used to do that before. Yeah. But I... I, I, I worked with a cop in the 6 who lived in uh, uh, Bumfuck, Iowa or something. And yeah. They got him, you know, coming out of the military or something. Uh-huh. And they, he became a cop. So he came so, here. So yeah. that's something that's always been... Yeah, you know, maybe not as many mm-hmm. back in the day, but... But is that a result, having to go through other states to get police officers here? Is it more prevalent uh, now because maybe uh, our maybe our economy's too good, maybe nobody wants a job here anymore? Is that well, what we have to do? Think think about it. We, uh, we keep talking about, you know, how they treat the cops here yeah. in the city. I mean, we started this discussion about that. So for a young man or woman, you know, who, who is at the right age, seeing all this stuff and being inundated with the propaganda and the stuff you're seeing now in the news, how p- cops are being disrespected and they're not being supported. You think the department I is mean, going woke? Who wants to do is that? Is the department oh. adjusting? Is that the problem? Well, or? I don't know if the department is. I certainly know the uh, mayor. the mayor's yeah. office. and I think we need to stand fast. Ball. There has yeah. to be a contradiction to it. Yeah. Well, you there know, has even to be if someone uh, that uh, is going to challenge him from uh, the puzzle palace. You don't you need a yes men. You no, know, we, we, need, we, we need you to get that yeah. hat with the fried eggs on it. <laughs> but the fried eggs <laughs> I'm next, talking about. Next time you come on the show, you got to bring yeah, that hat. you gotta, you got to see like him in full uniform. It was a sight to behold. It was just, that's the way a cop's supposed to look. And then on his hat, when, when you reach a certain uh, a rank, yeah. it, it's, it looks like fried eggs. It's yellow. Yeah. It's on top of the hat right there. So we want you Gold to get them. Gold red. Gold yeah. red, yeah. That's right. But they call Gold. it fried eggs. Yeah. And then you, you get your, you bring that hat with you, and we're going to toss it in the ring. <laughs> and we'll see what happens. We'll hey, see what listen, happens. guys, it's been my pleasure today. Thank Mark, you. Mark, thank Chief. you. Chief, and it was a pleasure. good luck with yeah. this podcast. And, thank uh, you so Billy, much. Would you come on again? Yeah, uh, sure. Oh, what the hell? we got to bring him yeah. back. Coffee? Yeah, yeah coffee, coffee. And, uh, listen, and water. I, I, okay. pitch, I, I want to pitch the, those articles. They're the great articles. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Right to the heart. If you like the chief and what he had to say today, you'll love the articles. They're not too long. There's not too much. It tells you exactly the information that you need to know. And from what I understand, Inside Blue 360 is going to be uh, looking for people to write articles. So uh, we'd love to maybe maybe have you write some more for uh, oh, yeah. Inside Blue 360. What do you sure. think? Why but not? You have to write with your hat on, too, with that <laughs> chief. <laughs> it gives you the power. Oh. Yeah. It gives him the power of the pen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Whatever, man. We chief. Yeah. You hail to the chief. That's Jeez. right. That's a good name. You come up with that, yeah. Pam? Yeah. yeah. See that? She's clever. the brains behind this operation. Very clever. <laughs> very, very clever. All right. So nice. uh, this is the part of the show that we hate to do, man, but we have to uh, We have to part ways temporarily. Adios. I want to say thank you to Rashad, our engineers on the ones Rashad. and twos. Our nice producer, job. Pam, Pam, Pam. for uh, for writing on that board and getting making sure that we don't forget stuff. <laughs> and to our first guest here at our new digs in Tribeca. Woo! On behalf of Police Off the Cuff, thank you, uh, Chief Lewis and Amon. It was a pleasure. Thanks. My yeah. pleasure, guys. I got to tell you, what's been, what's been, uh, what's been, uh,